afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four on this Thursday. Hello, Susan. How are you? Hi, good to see you. We're in the calm before the storm. Absolutely. It's Thursday. Dr. Zorba Pastor will be along later on taking your COVID questions. We'll let you know when to call in. But first, here's what we're keeping an eye on this Thursday. It could be snowing by this time tomorrow, believe it or not. And it could mean a really messy commute. Chris Reese will walk us through the alert days we're watching closely. We're waiting to see if an FDA committee will approve the first vaccine against COVID-19. And as we wait for that, we're looking at the COVID data. It's been two weeks since Thanksgiving. Is Wisconsin seeing a holiday-related surge in COVID cases? We'll find out. Let's take a look outside on this nice April day in the middle of December. <laughs> Unbelievable. 50s to today. But we have a pattern shakeup. Chris Reese is here with the details on that. Hi, Chris. Hi, Mark. Things are all quiet right now. We've been in this pattern of quiet weather pretty much since October, it has seemed like. But as we move forward, we're watching this starting to gather strength throughout the four corners right now. That is likely going to be working its way towards the north and east as we go through time. Clouds are already starting to thicken up out ahead of what's coming our way tomorrow. Temperatures today, though, Right around 50, you said it, an April day. Winds out of the south at three miles per hour. 54 in Janesville right now, but a cold front is on top of us. That's going to help drop those temperatures down closer to the freezing mark overnight tonight. Clouds will be on the increase, and then it is the snow chance into tomorrow. We'll likely see a rain-snow mix that transitions over to all snow. Now, I do expect the heaviest accumulations to be just southeast of Madison, but it's going to be real close to us as well, and I expect us here in Madison to see accumulating snow tomorrow night and into Saturday. So that full first storm forecast, we're ironing out all of those details. Traffic wise, this may look a lot different this time tomorrow, but for now, things are certainly all clear for us on the Beltline. Only your usual slowdown spots are showing up as of now. Susan. All right, Chris, thank you. We'll check back in just a little bit. And as we get ready for that first snowfall, the city of Madison is changing some of its plowing strategies. Brady Mallory tells us why COVID has them adapting their roots. Brady? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm not a meteorologist like Chris is, but I can tell you the snow is not flying yet. But that's not stopping the Madison Streets Division from planning ahead. A spokesperson tells us no matter what the weather throws at us this weekend, they will be ready. So here's the plan. Once the snow starts sticking to the roads, the trucks will be out. And they'll start plowing and salting the major streets in the city. Brian Johnson says not a lot will change from how they've plowed in the past. However, you may notice them salting fewer streets thanks to the pandemic. The reason why is that with all of the Madison school districts being virtual, all of the roads that are around the schools, like we don't really need to salt those particular roads because the schools aren't in session. And also with Madison Metro, they're not um, running all the same routes like usual, so we don't have to salt some of those roads either. Well, Johnson says that'll save the streets division hundreds of tons of salt this year. Well, if you want to see where drivers are going and which routes they are not salting, you can go to the streets division's website. All right, Brady, thank you. And you can get our latest forecast and radar as the weather changes this weekend right in the palm of your hand by downloading the Channel 3000 weather app. Just do a search in your app store for Channel 3000 weather. Be sure to enable notifications and we'll let you know as soon as the weather changes. To our coronavirus headlines now, more than 3,500 Wisconsinites have tested positive for COVID-19 since yesterday. That is consistent with the plateauing trend that the state has seen during the last few days. That said, Wisconsin continues to see double-digit numbers of people dying from the virus. 45 more deaths were reported today. New cases of coronavirus throughout the state of Wisconsin are down in the last two weeks, just when doctors were worried that they might actually see a surge. Now they're trying to figure out just why. Adam Duxter joins us from the Aligned Energy Testing Site with the latest. Adam? Yeah, workers here at the Alliant Energy Testing Site in Madison say this is the quietest they've seen things in quite some time. On Tuesday, they saw just 1,900 people come through, and then yesterday, just 1,200, which if you look a few weeks ago, is just about half of the numbers they were seeing on a daily basis. Now, UW's Dr. Jeff Potoff says it's not just the new cases that are down, but also hospitalizations from COVID-19 are down across the state as well. And keep in mind, this is the time they warned a surge in cases and hospitalizations could be possible due to mass gatherings during the Thanksgiving holiday. 
Today, both Potoff and Public Health Madison Dane County tried to offer up an answer as to why. We still prepare for the worst and hope for the best. A part of me really thinks that a lot of people are trying to do the right thing. It's possible that people rush to get tested before Thanksgiving and not so many have been tested afterwards. And maybe the optimist in me thinks that perhaps we're just not seeing as many people get tested because we, they just don't need to. But despite testing being down across the board in Wisconsin, we continue to see a high positivity rate of coronavirus tests, more than 20% in recent days. And Potoff suggests this, if any, is the best indicator that coronavirus is not going away here in Wisconsin. Tonight, both he and public health leaders are urging you, even if you feel mild symptoms, the best thing you can do for yourself is to come and get tested. Adam, thank you. The race for a vaccine is moving into the final stretch after a day-long meeting of Food and Drug Administration advisory panel is preparing to vote on whether to recommend emergency use authorization for the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine. If approved, the first shots could come within days. It is the final hurdle for the Pfizer COVID vaccine. The group of experts meeting to talk about whether to recommend emergency authorization. The drug maker made its case in a virtual presentation. We were able to enroll over 40,000 participants in a record six weeks, give them each two doses of vaccine and ensure their safety while conducting the trial with strict compliance and uncompromising quality. Safety is the top question, especially after the UK reported two possible allergic reactions. The FDA will consider the panel's recommendation, but the commissioner has already signaled strong support, saying that he has complete confidence in the scientific review. The FDA advisory panel is made up of non-government experts. The FDA is expected to follow the committee's advice, but it is not required to do so. In the past eight days, there have been five new COVID deaths among inmates in Wisconsin prisons. According to the Department of Corrections website, there are a total of 19 COVID-related deaths. There are almost 9,500 confirmed cases among inmates, with about 1,200 of those still active right now. We are continuing to follow up on the Wisconsin Department of Justice's investigation of a deadly shooting. Wisconsin State Troopers shot and killed someone in Fort Atkinson yesterday afternoon after a high-speed chase. Per state policy, three troopers are on administrative leave as the investigation continues. The troopers say they fired their guns after the driver of the vehicle shot at them. So far, rescue crews have been unable to locate a missing Madison-based F-16 pilot in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Madison's 115th Fighter Wing says it won't provide any updates until the pilot is found. The pilot's jet went down somewhere in the remote Hiawatha National Forest Tuesday evening during a practice drill. Officials have not said if the pilot ejected from the aircraft before the crash. The Civil Air Patrol, the Wisconsin National Guard and local authorities continue to search at the crash site. When we have an update, we will bring it to you on Channel 3000 and News 3 Now. President-elect Joe Biden has announced several more nominees to his incoming administration. He'll take to the stage to formally introduce them tomorrow. At the White House today, President Trump met with a group of GOP state attorneys general as he continues his bid to challenge the election results. Natalie Brand reports from Wilmington, Delaware. President-elect Joe Biden is officially naming several more cabinet picks. They include three who previously served in the Obama administration, with former Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack again nominated for that post, former White House Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough for Veterans Affairs Secretary, and former U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice leading the Domestic Policy Council, a role that does not require Senate approval. Implements. The president-elect has chosen the House Ways and Means Committee's Chief Trade Counsel Catherine Tai for U.S. Trade representative, while members of the Congressional Black Caucus are praising the selection of former chair Ohio Congresswoman Marsha Fudge as HUD secretary. There's a lot of talent within the House Democratic Caucus. It's no surprise uh, that 
several members may be considered for opportunities within the Biden administration. As the transition speeds ahead, President-elect Biden is also dealing with fallout after his son Hunter Biden revealed he's under a federal tax investigation, which began in 2018. The reaction to the news of the investigation of your son Hunter. Incoming First Lady Jill Biden ignored questions while assembling care packages for troops overseas with Defense Secretary nominee Lloyd Austin. At the White House, President Trump held a pre-planned private lunch with a group of Republican state attorneys general, including Ken Paxton of Texas. He's filed a lawsuit asking the U.S. Supreme Court to block several states from casting their electoral votes for President-elect Biden on Monday. 17 other state AGs have signed on to that case. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Wilmington, Delaware. And President-elect Biden will travel to Georgia next week to campaign for the two Democratic Senate candidates ahead of next month's runoff election. The outcome there will determine which party has control of the U.S. Senate. Well, still to come at four, the last time an American set foot on the moon was in December of 1972. We haven't been back since, but we may be heading back soon. We'll meet the 18 astronauts selected for upcoming moon missions when Live at Four continues. You're watching News 3 Now, live at 4. When you have zero worries and zero stress, there are zero reasons not to get into a Volkswagen. Click, call, or come by today. Visit our Volkswagen sign then drive event and lease the 2020 Jetta S today with zero down, zero deposit, zero first month's payment, and zero to a signing. So I can get the latest phones free with no hidden requirements? Yep. All season long. And do I have to get the most expensive plan? Nope. No plan restrictions. Okay, but we have to trade in our phones. Right? Right? Nope. Keep your phones. Did you trade free phones? Yep. The latest phone's free for you. Okay. Switch to U.S. Cellular and get the latest phones free, available all season long with no hidden requirements. U.S. Cellular, upgrade to fair. People were afraid I was contagious. I felt gross. It was kind of a shock after I started Cosentex. Four years clear. Real people with psoriasis look and feel better with Cosentex. Don't use if you're allergic to Cosentex. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. An increased risk of infections and lowered ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about an infection or symptoms. If your inflammatory bowel disease symptoms develop or worsen, or if you've had a vaccine or plan to, serious allergic reactions may occur. Learn more at Cosentex.com. Wisconsin is a home of workers. We know it needs to get done, and we do it. Yet, we've been hit hard, some harder than others. Our contact may be limited, but we still can lift each other up. The Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy providers are working together to help keep your heat and power on. You may not ask for it, but we want you to know we're here. USAA insurance for members like Martin, an Air Force veteran made of doing what's right, not what's easy. So when a hailstorm hit, USAA reached out before he could even inspect the damage. That's how you do it right. USAA insurance is made just the way Martin's family needs it. With hassle-free claims, he got paid before his neighbor even got started. Because doing right by our members, that's what's right. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. USAA. Before Voltaren Arthritis Pain Gel, my husband would have been on the sidelines. But not anymore. An alternative to pills, Voltaren is the first full prescription strength non-steroidal anti-inflammatory gel to target pain directly at the source for powerful arthritis pain relief. Voltaren, the joy of movement. There are zero reasons not to get into a Volkswagen, especially now that you can start shopping from home. Click, call, or come by today. Visit our Volkswagen sign and drive event and lease the 2020 T1 S4 Motion today with zero down, zero deposit, zero first month's payment, and zero to its signing. 
Research shows that conspiracy theories and misinformation about the coronavirus vaccine are convincing some people that they should not be immunized. Well, now on TikTok, a bioengineer is using the platform to fight falsehoods with facts. She's part of a team working on a COVID vaccine. In the UK, most people say they will get the shot, but research shows that about half of the population remains skeptical or would refuse to enter social, or refuse, that is, enter social media. Health agents say a crucial part of getting people out on site is making accurate information easy to find, like on the social media app TikTok. Anna Blankley is an American bioengineer working in London. She's now posting videos on TikTok providing the hard facts about the vaccine. She's trying to do it in an entertaining way. I've been looking at some of your TikTok posts. <laughs> They're hilarious. You're a great dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> how, how often do you do a new one? I try and do four to five per week. Anna is a TikTok sensation. One of her videos got 15 million hits. Social media companies have started removing misinformation about the virus and the vaccine. Anna is part of a team of young scientists out there trying to make sure correct information is shared in an easy to understand way. Well, stocks closed mixed amid stimulus talk stalemate. The Dow Industrials lost 69 points, closing at 29,999. The Nasdaq managed a 66 point gain, but the S&P 500 was off a little under five. Well, NASA has selected 18 astronauts for a program that could establish a sustainable presence on the moon and prepare for future trips to Mars. Vice President Mike Pence revealed the list of new astronauts for the Artemis program at the Kennedy Space Center and said the first woman to walk on the moon will come from this group. Mark Strassman looks at the candidates for NASA's first lunar mission since 1972. Jessica Watkins. Make way, Apollo era. In 2020, this is what the right stuff looks like. The Artemis generation. NASA's 18 Artemis astronauts range in age from 32 to 55. They include flight test pilots, geologists, and a former Navy SEAL. Half have never been to space. Half are women. And NASA intends for one of them to become a space first. I'm either going to walk on the moon or one of my friends is going to walk on the moon. And both of those scenarios are beyond the, my wildest dreams when I was a kid. It really just took my breath away. We talked to Artemis astronaut Nicole Mann. She's currently training to fly Boeing Starliner spaceship to the International Space Station next year. And now the moon is on her horizon, too. Would it be important to you to be the first woman to land on the moon? You know, I would love to be the first woman to walk on the moon, um, but in reality, it's it's the bigger mission that's more important. It's, it's important that we get there as Americans, that we get there as a human race. To get there, NASA's developing a new mega rocket and crew capsule called Orion. But Congress is yet to fully fund the Trump administration's 2024 landing goal. And the incoming Biden administration has to agree with these excited Artemis astronauts that this moon mission matters. And one of the important things for a huge program and a huge endeavor like this is to have that continuity across administrations. And I feel confident that we have that. This is the future of human exploration. But if the goal here was to create moon excitement, mission accomplished. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Atlanta. That is pretty exciting. Well, still to come at four, most parents are confident about the safety of their child booster seats. But a new study shows that many seats are not safe. Why not? Believe it or not, there are no federal standards for the seats. We'll have more on that coming up after Chris's forecast. fresh favorites from Pick and Save. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. It's Humane Holidays at Mounds. During December, purchase items off of the Humane Holidays wish lists to support Rock County's Friends of Noah Cafe program and the Dane County Humane Society. The cafe program provides free dog and cat food to local families who can't afford to feed their own pets. Humane Holidays not only provides Dane County Humane Society with vital wish list items, it truly makes the shelter feel more like home for the holidays. Support Humane Holidays at Mounds because everyone deserves a great holiday. Here's to the doers. 
people who realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Talk to your asthma specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. Ladies, check it out. So strong, so not ripped. What are we talking about? That's the Hefty Ultra Strong Bag. Hefty, Hefty, Hefty! Gimme. Give me the bag? Get Hefty Ultra Strong at a low price. I got your back, you got mine. Think about you all the time. Together we can come through. That's what love's made of. A little taste of home is worth sharing. How's saving for the renovation going? All done. I will never understand how you do it. Easy. She saves with BMO Harris. We give you a cash reward for every month you save. So BMO will give me cash for saving money? You bet. Can the subject hold position two, please? How's this? That's odd. Do I make saving look good? When a bank helps you make real financial progress, that's the BMO effect. Get a $5 reward every month you save $200 or more in a new BMO Statement Savings account. This holiday season, use the Pick and Save app to get personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. So you can save big on exactly what you want, no matter who you are. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Well, take a look at this. The world's largest gingerbread city is now open for the season. Every year since 1991, school children, local businesses, and thousands of other volunteers take part in the construction of the gingerbread city in Bergen, Norway. You'll find everything from tiny homes to local landmarks, trains, cars, boats, and international signature buildings, mostly made out of gingerbread. Each year, the display gets just a little bigger. That is that spectacular. That is amazing. It really Especially is. Especially the, the train and the boats, too. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'd like to see that someday. I would, too. Well, Unity Point Meritor, the busiest birthing center in Wisconsin, has released its annual list of the most popular baby names of the year. Here's a look at the top five boy and girls' names, starting with the girls. Coming in fifth place is Emma. Then there's a three-way tie for second place with Isabel, Lillian, and Olivia all in the number two spot. Coming in first for the second year in a row is Charlotte. We at News 3 Now like that name as well. Yes, we're partial to Charlotte. <laughs> Moving on to the boys, the boys now. In fifth place, it's James or Jameson. In fourth place, Theodore or Theo for short. In third place, Henry is the most popular. In second place, William. And in first place, Jackson or Jack. The full list is available on our website, channel3000.com. No Mark, Susan, or Chris's on that no. list this time. I guess we're all sort of out of date. <laughs> Not number one anymore. Chris, you're number one in our book. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Hopefully, we can be number one when it comes to accuracy on this forecast because it's real tricky, but I'm giving my best stab at how things should play out tomorrow coming up after this. I know this all looks very Hollywood, but guess what? This is a Nissan sales event ad. Sales event ads are usually boring. Is this boring? There's a nice little present. My husband's parents were visiting, and I promised them a home-cooked meal. Except my boss had a different idea. He tells me, hold your horses. I call my husband, and I say, I'm slammed. And he's like, quick trip. And I'm like, bingo. At quick trip, I say, what's good tonight? And the quick trip guy is like, everything. But I go for the hand-breaded fried chicken. And I go, make that times four. Being none the wiser, my mother-in-law is like, I always said she's a keeper. I'll run with that. Quick trip, we got you covered. 
Do you have dry, cracked hands from constant washing, cold weather, and hard work? Try O'Keefe's Working Hands. It's America's number one selling hand cream for guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked hands. Also available in O'Keefe's for healthy feet. Guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked feet. An evening in front of the fire can be so relaxing, but dangerous creosote buildup can cause a chimney fire if not removed. Help protect your home with CSL, the creosote sweeping log. It helps clean your chimney while it burns. Inside your chimney walls, there's a constant buildup of flammable tar and creosote. The active minerals in CSL will reduce those dangerous deposits, making your next fire safer. It's so easy. Burn just once every 60 fires. CSL, the creosote sweeping log. Available at Menards, Tractor Supply, Woodman's, and Walmart. Is your credit score getting in the way of things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit help you borrow up to $10,000. So check your eligibility on NetCredit.com today without affecting your credit score. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. It's called the greater good. At Quartz, it's what fuels our passion to better serve our members and our community. It's why we ensure easy access to the doctors, hospitals, and clinics of UW Health. It's what pushes us to invest in the name of community health and wellness programs and to find new ways to help those who need the help the most. But hey, you know all about the greater good. Quartz, health plans built with you in mind. I know this all looks very Hollywood, but guess what? This is a Nissan sales event ad. Sales event ads are usually boring. Is this boring? There's a nice little present. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Eyes to the sky as we get ready for the next storm system to move into the state of Wisconsin. So far, it was another day of sunshine, but we're starting to see at least a couple clouds sneak into the horizon. Still, we are quiet throughout the upper Midwest, but we are watching the four corners right now. This is that same storm system that I talked about being offshore. Now it's on land. So what happens is weather balloons that are released today, they are going up into this storm system and helping us better forecast how this may impact us here throughout South Central Wisconsin. Now here's the deal, the cloud cover that's streaming in, yes, it is coming all the way from the desert Southwest. We also have a cold front that's moving through as well. There's not much moisture with it now, so we're not gonna see any precipitation from it. But as this cold front starts to work its way towards the South and East, it puts on the brakes. It's gonna slow down just a little bit. This same system, over the four corners becomes the wave of low pressure that I expect to ride along that cold front. Now we're at the same time tomorrow. Precipitation begins to arrive. It'll arrive as a mix, but we may be just cold enough on the northern side that this becomes snow by the time we get you towards four o'clock. That sticks around into the afternoon and evening. Then overnight, we'll see a little bit of a lull, but still some light snow will stick around as that low begins to move on out of here. With that, we do have the alert day for a mix changing the snow tomorrow night into Saturday. Accumulations are going to be possible. I expect the heaviest of those to be just southeast of Madison, but still there are some question marks that need to be answered. That being said, this right here is the probability of saying at least two inches of snow. You see that up around 70 to 80 percent. With that, this is what we call a slam dunk. This is the confidence that most of us are going to see about two inches of snow in this region with that highest probability. It's going to be lighter as you go back towards the north and west. But when we look at the probability of four inches of snow, that comes down to about 40 percent. That's the upper end of my snowfall range. You start to get towards six inches of snow and the probabilities there are just much less. We'll talk about the snowfall amounts in just a moment, but I call this a storm of change. And this is why I say that after that cold front comes on through with the storm, we start to get a connection to the Arctic air. While the core of that stays to our north, we will likely be colder as we move into the days ahead. Any impulses that come through may bring us at least a chance to see some snow. 
50 our temperature right now. Watch how temperatures change as we go into the overnight hours. This is 32. Those clouds will be on the increase. We will only warm up to about 34, 35 as we head into tomorrow. You see that precipitation starting to break out into the afternoon. That's snow for us, and then we'll likely see light snow lingering into the early part of your Saturday. Visibility comes down as well, folks. This is fog early on in the morning, but watch how the visibility begins to change. This is 530 tomorrow afternoon. Visibility is down towards half a mile, potentially down to zero at some points into early on Saturday. Two to four inches expected in the Madison Metro with the highest of those closer towards places like Edgerton and Milton. Janesville over towards Kenosha and Milwaukee may be warm enough to have more rain and snow mix in. It's going to be a sharp cutoff towards the north and west. That's why I've gone with the trace to two inches. Beyond that storm system, we have another chance for some flurries next Tuesday and Wednesday. Is it time for some snow? It is time for some snow, Mark. All right, we'll keep an eye on things, but timing is great. Not a lot of commuting problems. Yeah. All right, thank right you, Chris. For the weekend. We have breaking news just into our newsroom. The Wisconsin Air National Guard 115th Fighter Wing says the pilot who crashed Tuesday night is dead. The National Guard says it will not release the pilot's name until family has been notified. The F-16 crashed Tuesday night in a remote part of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. A spokesperson for the Guard says it is deeply saddened by the tragic loss. And we have more on this at on channel3000.com. And of course, we'll have an update coming up on News 3 Now at 5. Some popular children's car booster seats are failing to adequately protect kids. That's according to a congressional investigation that found that some manufacturers are unsafely recommending that children under 40 pounds and as light as 30 pounds can use booster seats. The seats all passed side impact crash tests, but as Chris Van Cleve reports, that's because there are no federal standards. The videos are hard to watch. Child-sized dummies flail violently in car booster seats during a side impact crash test. In each case, the booster seats all passed because there are no federal standards. It was just simply appalling. Representatives Raja Krishamurthy and Katie Porter launched a House Oversight Committee investigation involving seven brands of car booster seats. Their findings obtained by CBS News conclude booster seat makers endangered the lives of millions of American children and misled consumers about the safety of booster seats by failing to conduct appropriate side impact testing, deceiving consumers with false and misleading statements about their side impact testing protocols, and unsafely recommending that children under 40 pounds and as light as 30 pounds can use booster seats. The report also calls for the Federal Trade Commission and state attorneys general to launch consumer protection investigations. Parents are relying on companies to sell safe products, and they're relying on the federal government to regulate those products. When the manufacturer's guidance is in fact a bunch of falsehoods and lies, kids' lives are being put at risk. Dr. Ben Hoffman is a lead author of car seat recommendations for the American Academy of Pediatrics. Would you have given any of the booster seats in those videos a passing grade? I can't imagine that I would give those a passing grade. The videos where the impact was on the far side, those were especially terrifying because there was so much movement of the head and neck of the dummy outside of the shell of the booster seat. But U.S. regulations still allow for kids weighing as little as 30 pounds to be in a booster. Do it again. Jillian Brown was a 37-pound five-year-old when the car she was riding in was hit from the side on the way to school. Brown was strapped into her even flow big kids booster seat. The crash left her internally decapitated, paralyzing her from the neck down. Now nine years old, she's kept alive by a ventilator. I would never have bought that if I'd known. I would have left them in the front-facing five-point harness for years. Even Flo says her booster seat performed as designed, and Jillian's injuries were primarily due to the severity of the crash and or driver error, adding the seat meets or exceeds federal standards and passed the company's internal crash tests. The company settled a lawsuit with the Brown family this summer. House investigators found several makers have adopted a 40-pound minimum, even Flo and Graco, as recently as earlier this year. But Baby Trend and Kids Embrace continue to market their booster seats for children as little as 30 pounds. Chico's website now has a 40-pound minimum, but we were able to buy this booster Tuesday that says 30 pounds and up. 
The company's trade association says in a statement, a correctly used car seat is a child's best defense in a car crash, reducing the risk of injury by 45% when compared with vehicle seat belts alone, adding the industry supports stringent federal standards. So parents, what do you do? Experts say for kids in that 30 pound range, they're safest staying in a car seat like this that has the five point restraint until they grow out of it. That's gonna be at least 40 pounds and some seats go up to 65. This one even notes going to the booster seat at 40 pounds and at least four years old. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Washington. Court is also critical of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Despite being directed by Congress 20 years ago to create a side impact crash test standard for car seats, the agency hasn't done it. The NHTSA says the process is highly complex and that those standards are coming, quote, soon. Let's hope so. We'll be right back with Dr. Zorba Pastor. Celebrate the holidays with custom gifts from Madison Top Company. Clothing, mugs, ornaments, and more. Ready as fast as one hour with their lightning service. Buy local with fast, custom-printed gifts at madisontop.com since 1974. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. Hi, I'm Brian from McGann Furniture in Baraboo. We know that hardworking people want the most value for their money. When you shop at McGann's, we've already sorted out and selected the brands that we feel offer you the most bang for your buck. From young couples just starting out to people my age, we offer a huge selection at prices that will fit your budget. Plus, most purchases include free delivery and setup. Shop McGann Furniture in downtown Baraboo. You'll be glad you did. Needed Relief Day Spa and Wellness is a place where you can relax, be pampered, and revitalize your life in a safe and tranquil environment. Our guest safety and comfort is our top priority. Revitalize yourself at Needed Relief today and give the gift of wellness to those you love with a Needed Relief gift card, available now online. It's exactly what we all need. Needed Relief Day Spa and Wellness, Madison's world-class wellness spa. Celebrate the holidays with custom gifts from Madison Top Company. Clothing, mugs, ornaments, and more. Ready as fast as one hour with their lightning service. Buy local with fast, custom-printed gifts at madisontop.com since 1974. Tonight at 5, the Madison community is weighing in on who they think should be the next police chief, what qualities they're looking for in that person. That's ahead at 5. And we have an alert day in the forecast. Accumulating snow is looking more likely as we head into the weekend. That's in your first warn forecast. And ahead at 6, Dane County COVID cases are leveling off, but we're still at a very high level of activity. A look at the latest data now two weeks after Thanksgiving. That's ahead on News 3 Now at 6. Look at downtown Madison, a beautiful evening out there. Take a walk if you have time before the weather changes big time tomorrow. A puppy who escaped the jaws of an alligator in Florida with the help of his owner is now receiving a special honor. You may have seen this because it was one of the most viral videos of the year. A Florida man prying open the jaws of an alligator to save his dog, Gunner. The puppy suffered a puncture wound in its belly, but is doing well after a trip to the vet. And now, Gunner has his first job. Gunner was sworn in this week as an honorary deputy. He'll be part of a program that teaches children about water safety. This is a big day. You're going to be a detective now, okay? Here we go. Deputy Dogs is an amazing program and does amazing things. Gunner, our detective, the little dog, is safe with its homeowner 
and it's just it's a great day. The Lee County Sheriff credits Gunner's owner for saving his dog's life. Richard Wilbanks says he wasn't going to let an alligator have his puppy for breakfast. And you may have noticed that he saved Gunner without ever losing his cigar. <laughs> <laughs> That's talent. Well, a key FDA committee is expected to approve the first COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use. Once approved, the full agency will likely give its approval tomorrow, and the first vaccines could be in people's arms by this weekend. Joining us to talk about the vaccine and any side effects that come with it is Dr. Zorba Pastor. And later on, he'll be taking your calls at 270-9933. We'll let you know when to call in. Hi, Zorba. How are you? Hi, good, Zorba. Very good, thanks. So this is pretty exciting news that this vaccine is probably going to be approved any minute now. Oh, I think it's I think it's very exciting. If you look at the vaccine, the vaccine is 95% or greater better in preventing COVID. And if you look at the hospitalizations, it's probably closer to 100% effective in keeping people from being hospitalized. So this is really pop and wow. I mean, the cavalry are coming. It's so amazing. So much better, for instance, than the influenza vaccine. The influenza vaccine is about 70% effective at best in keeping away influenza. And in terms of reducing hospitalization, it's only about 60 or 70% of people who do not get hospitalized or are very sick. So this vaccine is really, really good. This is very exciting news. This is really going to be th a thing that would really stem the tide of the epidemic and be able to get our, basically get our country and the world back to normal. Oh, that is so reassuring to hear. I know that you've studied a lot about the research into the vaccine, including a new article in the New England Journal of Medicine. Does that bolster your confidence in the success of this vaccine? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's exactly what the FDA now is looking at. And the FDA is also looking at side effects. And are there side effects in the vaccine? Sure, just like influenza. Pain at the site of the vaccine, not an uncommon thing at all. Uh, sometimes people will have myalgias, little muscular aches. They may feel a little bit feverish serious side effects really did not occur. Now, right now, they're looking at the possibility of Bell's palsy, which is really a drooping of the mouth. Uh, but uh, as far as the FDA is concerned, as far as they're looking at, they really don't think that that is a side effect at all from it. So just like you can get side effects from the influenza shot, you've got to weigh that. You've got the possible side effects in the vaccine, but you have the possible side effects of getting COVID, the COVID that might actually be serious for you, or you might bring death into somebody house because you have COVID. So I think many, many people are going to take the vaccine. And I think a lot of people who say, well, they're really not quite sure. Once they see people take it and see the safety, they will also take it. But don't call your doctor to get on a waiting list. There is By no one. means. There is no waiting list around. What will happen is public health is going to look and see who are the first people to get it. And those are people working with people in the hospital, the ones who are most likely to actually get COVID. Medical professionals will get it and then they'll roll it out after that. But there's no waiting list. And frankly, as far as I know, certainly within Wisconsin, we don't even know when it's going to become available. We know it's going to be soon, but we don't know what the rules are of who gets those first shots. So it could be months before so, the general population gets it. It's going to be sometime. I don't know if it'll be months, but certainly it's not going to be before the end of the year. I doubt very much if anyone other than first responders are going to get it before the middle of January. After that, it's all a function of how much vaccine we get and basically how we deploy that vaccine. That's a whole other issue. But frankly, the cavalry are coming. This is really good news. All right, it's time to call in. Get your questions answered. 270-9933 is the number. We'll get to your COVID questions right after this. one of our favorite Portage families here at the Portage hi. Furniture Store, the Ayers family that has grown a little bit since, yeah, he says high five. That's right, <laughs> since the last time we were we, here. Yeah, uh, we sure have. You see, Austin and I, proud third generation owners, and now we're working on our fourth generation. We've seen generations of customers come through, and I think we take a lot of joy in seeing, hey, my parents bought from your dad or bought from your uncles or bought from your grandpa. Mm -hmm. And now Austin and I get to enjoy that ourselves. How much fun is it on the days you come back into town and the three of you are together? It's, um, it's very special. Like I said, longevity from my dad and uncle started in 1940 to now. Very special. We're very, very proud to showcase uh, predominantly American-made brands. Safe and pressure-free shopping. We have a number of great lines, including Serta Mattresses, Smith Brothers, Flex Steel, 
Lazy Boy in England. And not everyone has the heir's last name, but everybody here, I know you guys consider family. Yeah, we really have some wonderful people here, including, you know, two salespeople, Rosie and Punky, who have been here with us from the very beginning, and we're really thankful for them. Yeah, they really make you guys, they're the ones who make you all look good. Yeah, they are. No doubt. And we need all the help we can get. Yeah, well, he said it. I <laughs> What are some of the biggest things that set you guys apart? The free delivery. <laughs> yeah. They still got it. I was wondering. We do. Glad to yeah. hear it. And on top of a you know, first class free delivery service, we're very proud of our huge, uh, huge selection of top name brand uh, furniture at guaranteed low prices. <laughs> well, with the free delivery, we've got a lot of stops, but I'm glad you're helping me. From the Portage Furniture Store, I'm Emmy Fink, and you're buzzed in Madison. He's excited. If your dry eye symptoms keep coming back, inflammation in your eye might be to blame. Looks like a great day for achy, burning eyes. Over-the-counter eye drops typically work by lubricating your eyes and may provide temporary relief. Ha! These drops probably won't touch me. Zydra works differently, targeting inflammation that can cause dry eye disease. What is that? Zydra! No! It can provide lasting relief. Oh. Zydra is the only FDA-approved treatment specifically for the signs and symptoms of dry eye disease. One drop in each eye, twice a day. Don't use if you're allergic to Zydra. Common side effects include eye irritation, discomfort, or blurred vision when applied to the eye, and unusual taste sensation. Don't touch container tip to your eye or any surface. After using Zydra, wait 15 minutes before reinserting contacts. Got any room in your eye? Talk to an eye doctor about twice daily Zydra. I prefer you didn't. Zydra, not today, dry eye. Kiss. Those main arteries through Madison continue to be in great shape, all green throughout the Beltline and most of your area highways. We are seeing some slowdowns, though, on East Wash, going from Sun Prairie down towards the capital in both directions, especially the closer you are towards the capital. Now, those speeds on the Beltline, a little slower today than previous days, but they're still up there closer to 60 miles per hour. Once you get past Fish Hatchery, they're about 65 miles per hour. Right now, all routes are cruising along. We do not have any outrageous delays or anything like that. It's going to be a smooth commute if you're getting ready to hit the road. All right, Chris, we want to pass along this information. The Food and Drug Administration's advisory panel has just approved emergency use of the uh, Pfizer vaccine, so now we'll go to the FDA to, the, to get the um, FDA to get the authorization to get shots in arms, possibly by Saturday. So that's Yeah, FDA approval news. is expected imminently, we understand. And that is a perfect segue into Dr. Zorba Pastor, who's <laughs> here today to answer your coronavirus questions. 270-9933, the number to call. Zorba, that's exciting news. Oh, that is hooray. I mean, when the advisory panel do, does give an approval, the FDA is just a matter of soon to follow. That's going to happen, and that is absolutely fantastic. We've got a great FDA, great advisory panel. People should be assured that the shots are safe. All right. Let's get to the calls. We'll start with Tom in Madison. Hi, Tom. What's your question? Oh, hello, Mark, doctor. Uh, I'll be quick and try to make my point. Uh, two reports have come in, one about alcohol, uh, Russia just stated to their uh, people that uh, I know they're heavy on vodka, do not uh, refrain from vodka for two months. And the other one is, the report came in, if you vape or smoke, you may get minimal benefit from uh, c cigarettes. And the other one is uh, uh, the origin of it. Where did it come from? Uh, an animal or what? or they just come up with it itself. Thank you for your time and taking my call. Sure. All right, you're well, welcome. Well, first of all, the vaccines that are out right now are actually developed in a test tube. You could look at it as a test tube vaccine. It is not the traditional vaccine that came through an animal model such as polio. Vaping actually makes things worse. There's no doubt about it. There's some research that shows that when you vape, you actually reduce the ability of the mucosal cells within the bronchial tree to fight infection. There was a recent article that actually showed in the Journal of the AMA that vaping is bad for you. And as far as refraining from vodka and the Russians, I don't have any comment about that. They drink a lot of vodka. That's their problem. All right. All right, let's go to Barbara in Laval. Hi, Barbara, what's your question? 
Good afternoon. I'd like to know how the doctor can endorse something that doesn't have long-term studies. This has been rushed through quicker than a tube of mascara as far as safety goes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. That's a that's a really good question. Well, first of all, we're in the middle of a pandemic. We've shut down our economy. We have people dying every day, a huge number of people, almost 2,000 people a day who are dying. A situation like that calls for absolute, absolutely, you have to turn off, you know, basically get things done as quickly as possible. And I think for those people who don't want to take the immunization because they want to wait a year or two to look at the long-term side effects, I think that's exactly their right. And for others, such as myself, I'm going to roll up my sleeve. And that's why the immunizations should not be required. They should be something that people make a choice of. But when you're in a pandemic where the world is shutting down full steam ahead, use some good data, make some quick decisions. All right, let's go to Gina now in Janesville. Hi, Gina, what's your question? Yes, I was told that once you have COVID, you can't get it again for up to 90 days. Is that true? No, it is not true. But we do know that many people who have COVID do not appear, at least at this point, to get COVID again. There are a couple of studies that show that there was a fishing boat. They looked at, uh, there was an outbreak in a fishing boat of COVID and those who had antibodies at, at the beginning, which meant that they previously had COVID, did not get COVID a second time. But how long that actually lasts, we don't know. Once again, new science. But if you've had COVID, even if you've had it, probably getting an immunization may still be in your best interest new science that has yet to be worked out but there's no 90-day idea because frankly 90 days ago where were we and what we knew we didn't even have an immunization like we have today all right let's go to John in Madison hi John what's your question hi I'd like to know after a person has had the two doses of the vaccine how long must that person continue to wear a mask thank you well, first of all, we know that you then have antibodies uh, to, we know that you've got antibodies to COVID and you're not going to get COVID. But there have been studies that some people may have COVID again in their nose, even though they don't get sick, they may be curious for COVID. So at this time, the recommendation is still going to be to wear a mask. Now, two months from now, three months from now, four months from now, I'm not sure. Dr. Fauci says sometime, maybe in the spring, maybe in the summer, we'll be able to go back to normally things opening up without a mask. But I don't think we really have the answer to that right now. Stay tuned. All right, Renee in Madison, quickly, you're our last caller. Oh. Renee wants to know if you can get the flu and COVID shots together. Uh, the answer is yes. First of all, the flu shots are available now. Get it now. Don't wait. And whether or not you give it together, I think that may be the thing. But frankly, get your flu shot today. Do not put it off. All right. We're out of time. Thank you all for calling in on this breaking news vaccine day. It's pretty exciting. Zorba, thanks Great for being news. with us today. And we'll have a final check of your forecast coming up. Here's a secret worth sharing. Robertson, Wisconsin's aesthetic leader, is making it easier to tackle pesky frown lines. It's a Botox BOGO for anyone new to this service. There is no better time to learn how Botox is different at Robertson. People were afraid I was contagious. I felt gross. It was kind of a shock after I started Cosentex. Four years clear. Real people with psoriasis look and feel better with Cosentex. Don't use if you're allergic to Cosentex. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. An increased risk of infections and lowered ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about an infection or symptoms. If your inflammatory bowel disease symptoms develop or worsen, or if you've had a vaccine or plan to, serious allergic reactions may occur. Learn more at Cosentex.com. Carrier has a complete line of home heating products to keep your family comfortable this winter without burning your budget. With smart temperature management and remote access options, it's easier than ever to control your home's climate. And Carrier energy efficient systems can help reduce utility bills without sacrificing comfort. For more complete comfort and greater peace of mind, turn to your Carrier expert. Harker Heating and
Richard Chia in shape with Richard Simmons Chia Pet and your favorite painter, Bob Ross Chia Pet. Fantastic. Just spread the seeds, water, and watch it grow. Chia. And the Trolls Poppy Chia Pet. And don't forget the adorable Hedgehog and Llama Chia Pets. Chia. Always make you happy. Chia Pets, the gift that grows. At Walgreens, Lowe's, Menards, and Walmart. Makes a great gift. Hey folks, Friday morning is an alert day. Hattie will time out the snow and just how much we could get. And we're checking in with local doctors on whether there's space in our hospitals if you or your loved one gets sick. We'll see you Friday morning. At News 3 Now, the FCC allowed us to boost the power of our broadcast signal. If you watch us using an antenna, you may need to activate the scan function on your TV menu to rescan available channels so you can continue to enjoy News 3 Now and CBS programming. Please rescan your TVs today. All right, here's the latest snowfall map for us. Two to four inches expected throughout the Madison area. It's going to be a sharp cutoff towards the north and west. That's where I'm looking at a trace to two inches. Down towards the south, it's a trace to two inches just because it's a question of when the mix trans transitions over to all snow. Otherwise, I'd have you guys in two to four as well. Here are those impacts. All right, thank you, Chris. Coming up tomorrow here on Live Before, Dr. Kerry Donahue takes your pet medical questions live. And our Michael Bruno goes behind the screens to check out Verona Area Community Theater's virtual holiday variety show. That's coming up tomorrow at 4.